as I was there for two days. So as, as time progressed, I noticed that when the monks weren't in prayer or in, in meals and stuff, when they had a little bit of leisure time, everyone seemed really happy, you know, smiling. It was a brotherhood. And, and it really, it really made me think like how, you know, because for me, all I could think of how boring that life could be, right? Of like, dude, you live here for the rest of your life. Like you wake up at 5 a.m. and you're just praying and then you go work at wherever, like where, whatever your thing is, whether you're a gardener or you take care of the livestock or, you know, you're helping build one of the guest houses or whatever it is. And, and you eat your meals in silence and then, you know, your last prayer, I think of the evening, it's like 8.30 and then you're in bed by 9 and do it all over again. And I was just like, dude, what a boring life. Like, and just didn't, didn't really understand, you know, didn't really understand. I got to ask though, like they do all that for the next life. But what if they're wrong? What if this is the life you get and you're supposed to enjoy this and live it? You know what I mean? Like, does that ever, because you know, I'm not nearly as spiritual as you and I definitely don't know as much about the Bible and stuff, but what if they're wrong? What if eating in silence and not looking at people and forgoing all the actual pleasures of th- and enjoyments of this life doesn't do anything for you? You know what I mean? Like th- that's, They're betting heavy. You know, that's, they are. They're all in for sure. Yeah, that's faith. Yeah, I guess that's true, right? Faith is believing in stuff that you don't know for sure. And, I mean, they do have... That it's based on a lot of scripture, you know, a lot of scripture, a lot of text, a lot of every service was all in Latin. So they all speak Latin, which is really cool. So they go beyond just reading the New Testament. Yeah. You know, they're very, they're very well educated. I mean, what else are you going to do? You know, they have a beautiful library. They have tons of books. So they're all very avid readers. Uh, But no no doubt they're, they're, they're all in. (laughs) Books that are. And because that's one of the questions I have for you, man, is did you like, are they allowed to challenge the ideas or they just have to believe everything they're told? Because that's where I would have a lot. Well, one, I wouldn't want to do a lot of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But two, if you just told me like I am awful at just believing anything people tell me I have to believe. Mm -hmm. Like I got to experience it myself. I got to research. I got to look into it. If you just tell me like even as a kid, if somebody just told me because. There's no way I was going to follow that rule. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like in yeah. the library, did you see any books that would contradict what they're told? Or is it all like supporting documents? They seem to be, they seem to be all supporting. That's you what know? I guess. And so when I went, this was after Daniel had spent five years there at the huh. monastery. So that was after five years that's when you get initiated in as a brother. So you kind of have that period of time because there, there are guys that go there and, you know, might spend a year, two, three, four, and decide this isn't for me or maybe yeah. decide I don't they can believe leave. in this anymore. Yeah, you don't, you don't make your vows yet. So that's, that's why I went. That's nah. why Daniel's parents reached out to me, one of his best friends from high school, to family members. To, and it was cool because I met people from other parts of his life, right, like one of his best friends – in college that I had never met, we connected. Uh, and, and it was cool just to see like who showed up. Cause it's an interesting group yeah. of people that shows up for a person who's making his vows as a Catholic monk, you know, for me to, and I had to, I had to make a decision, right? I have a lot going on. I'm busy. It was a Tuesday and Wednesday, right in the middle of the work week to go over there. But I was like, you know what? Like this, I love this guy. You know, he used to be one of my best friends, we have a we go way back. I haven't seen him in seven years. This is a huge commitment, and I respect commitment, even if I don't agree with it. Like respect to him, I don't fully understand all aspects of why he's doing what he's doing, but I understand enough to where I can respect it. And you respect the discipline it takes to do what he's doing, <sighs> dude. I thought seventy five hard yeah. was tough. Yeah, it's five <laughs> years. Yeah, well, now the rest of his life, and in the in the small amount that I got to interact with him, I asked, I was like, so, 
you know, was this, uh, and it was cool because I, I wasn't sure how he was going to be, but yeah. as soon as he came, he's like, oh, Lee, what's up? And he was like, grabbing my arm. She's like, where you at? Where you at? Like feeling on my arm, you know, and he, it was just him. But I was like, dude, so this is, I saw your schedule. Cause in the, in my little monk dorm, they had the <laughs> schedule for like, if you want to attend, like this is open, you can come to the 5 a.m. prayer, everything. <clears throat> And I was like, dude, I saw your schedule. So you're telling me this has been your life for the past five years. He's like, yeah. I was like, you haven't left the monastery. He's like, mm, besides going to a sister monastery in New Mexico and a couple trips to the dentist, no. I was like, wow, like that. Seems happy? Yeah, seems seems very happy. So here's. Do they have a gym for him to work out? No. No, no How gym. How are his biceps? Uh, not Not as strong <laughs> as they once were, that's for sure. But everybody is lean. There wasn't one chubby monk. Wasn't one chubby no monk. No chubby monks. Mm-mm. Because they are efficient, man, with everything. that I mean, w- prayer to the meals to the – everything is just – because you're doing it every single yeah. day. So they're – Well, you can't go back for seconds either, right? You get one meal? You do, but it's like – Are you allowed to say, hey, throw a little extra of that stuff on my plate? They kind of they kind of set out like a big – plate or bowl of whatever it is and you just serve yourself Uh, so you can put a little more at least for us i didn't notice that that the monks were like restricted in any way with the food i think you can eat as much as you like so (laughs) what is his purpose so so they just stay in oklahoma forever he's not they're not gonna like send them out to try to convert other people or he may have faith so I believe at eight years, he was saying at three years later, he becomes an ordained priest. And at that point, he may be asked to go do some speaking engagements and stuff, and which I would love to see because he's a fantastic speaker. This guy's actually who introduced me to Toastmasters. Oh, okay. Uh, when we, after we graduated high school, like his first year in college, and we were both, he was one of my most ambitious entrepreneurial friends. Would always talk about businesses. He had a couple of his small businesses during and after high school, um, and and that's what we would always talk about. And kind of the path for him was that he started getting really, really, really deep into entrepreneurship and and wealth, and really analyzing and studying some of the most uh, wealthiest and most powerful people in the world. And he started going down this rabbit hole. And shared a lot of things that are kind of popping up today. Yeah. Illuminati, you know, pedophile rings and all, all this, a lot of this uh, conspiracy theory stuff that you're seeing today. He showed me something that I think one of the, one of the creepiest things he showed me was this thing. Uh, it's called the Georgia Guidestones. Yeah. It's this huge, um, r- like rock f- creation in this random city in Georgia and it's inscribed in like seven different languages. It says new world order. And it said like new world order, like the 10 requirements, like one was like 1 billion people, one unified world government, all this stuff. And essentially what he was, what he was finding out is that most of the most powerful people in the world, the Rothschild family, the Rockefeller family, all these powerful families that run the banks um are kind of inherently evil and he he went down this deep rabbit hole of like the only way to combat that is through god and started getting really religious he was traveling europe and <clears throat> went to uh, a lot of the churches there i think he actually got denied um acceptance into some sort of Catholic monastery in Europe and then came back to the U S and was like, I want to dedicate my life to God. Like how can I serve in the highest way? And that's the path he chose becoming a monk. Yeah. That's interesting. I I guess we all have our own paths, you know, and I think it's good you accepted his and, and we're there for him. It's cool to hear that outside of, when you got to interact, you felt like your normal friend. Yeah. Even after all that time. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He so did. does he share, like, what his goals are, his ambitions with this going forward? Or so he wants to become an ordained priest? Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to ask him about that. We communicate 
through writing letters, um, and we haven't exchanged letters in about a year. I, yeah. we, I had been pretty good about a couple letters per year uh, for the first four years, and then I kind of fell off. He ga- he gave me a little uh, a little heat about it. We were talking about discipline. He's like, speaking of discipline, man, I need you to stay disciplined on those letters so I can hear how you're doing. And um, so, they're, so they're literally just a throwback to <clears throat> old society. Mail, letters. Oh, yeah. self They use Amazon Prime. I thought that was hilarious. I was how do Amazon. they use Amazon Prime? They have, there's a, in the gift shop that's open to the public, there's a computer. But none of them have cell phones or like laptops or anything like that but yeah that they uh there has to be like an admin person who orders something because i thought it was funny i took a picture of that too of these monks carrying these amazon boxes dude that <laughs> see that's to me that's like a conflict right like amazon has their own issues right i don't know dude i don't understand it i, <laughs> I appreciate that people can do it but i'm way too uh I don't know what the right word is. I just don't believe everything everybody tells me. And that that's one of the reasons, like, for organized religion, quite honestly, I, I just kind of do my own thing is, one, I don't know if it's all true. Mm-hmm. And two, I've seen a lot of <clears throat> hate come from this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of isolation or, you know, this group against that group based off beliefs that are very, very similar that right. we just can't see past because we're so focused on our, on our portion of it. And then obviously there's a lot of good. Yeah. You know, there there's there's both sides of it. I just it wouldn't be for me, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, me neither. And and even even Daniel's father was like, you know, I'm not the life for me, but I'm proud of him, you know. That's that's what he chose. And I think what's interesting, Jared, is that it's not like this was really imposed on him. And even to become a brother, it's like you have to you have to really want it and they have to accept you like they're they can they can turn away anyone who's like i want to be a a brother of i wonder what their retention rate is or their failure rate of their program it's got to be high yeah yeah no idea huh but surprisingly it was i feel like it was more young guys than old dudes i would say more than half of the guys had to be 30 or under that surprises you see that i would think that would be their prime age would be like those early 20s when you're really out searching for yourself but that why does that surprise you why would you think it'd be older guys <clears throat> i just kind of thought when i think of a monastery i think of like old wise men just a bunch of old <laughs> dudes yeah but you gotta teach the young ones before they get old yeah i guess i just didn't know that there that that many young people in our world would choose to... Well, how many was there? I think there's like 55. Wow, that's way more than I thought. Mm-hmm. I thought for sure you didn't tell me like 12. No, no, it's like 55 of them. Dude, I just have this vision though, like monasteries and monks seem to always get overrun during violent times. Like when you watch back like the Viking shows, like they pillage monasteries, all the rebellions. So was there... Because they're they're very peaceful, right? They they hold. That would be my concern. Is like, am I just being so mm. one sided that like I don't, I'm not allowed to see danger? We're not allowed to fight back. Yeah, I mean, if like 55 dudes roll up on them with some guns and you know, 12 guys. To, yeah, like that. I don't. Yeah, there's not much they can do. Because the was there thing much is, security or anything? No. Yeah, see, that's... The, but it's so isolated that it's like... you. It, it's hard to find. Yeah, like, like unless, that's true. Unless you're, you know where it's at. You know what I mean? Um, there's not much around there. It's it's miles, several miles before you're like in, in a town. So they're, they're definitely out on their doing their own thing. But one thing that I really wanted to share with the community that I noticed was that they were happy. Yeah. You know, that they all seemed genuinely happy. It wasn't like they were faking or going through the motions or or putting a smile on. And it, it really led me to analyze like, how could, 
how could these Jews be happy with such a simple life? Like they don't have anything to think about. And I came up, <clears throat> I'd love for the community to let us know what they think and, and you too, Jared. But I I came up with two two pillars that we talk about here on the On Purpose podcast that I think really supported that level of happiness. And, that, and those two pillars are, one is that they have purpose. They have a clearly defined purpose. You know, they're there to serve God. They've made their vows. They're doing all their prayers for a, a very specific reason, and it's very clearly defined for them. And then number two, they have community. They're doing this every day with 54 other brothers that they're doing these tasks with every day. With with us, you know, it's really rare to to be that close with a community of people working towards a common goal. At the very most, you have, you know, most of us spend most of our time in life working, right? The, the eight hours a day is more time than we put into any other individual thing. And most of our coworkers are not, we don't consider brothers, right? Half of them we don't, we don't like or, or love. And, the common goal isn't as for most companies and stuff. Most employees don't have a clearly defined purpose for every task that they're doing with them. They do. So that was something I thought was really interesting. And I, and I think what contributes to that is, is purpose and community. Yeah. And I would, I would say a couple other things come to mind is one belief, right? Like they're believing in something bigger than them. So even, even for me, like not knowing where everything goes, as long as you believe in your process and you know you're working towards something bigger than you, you'll do the things that are uncomfortable. You'll wake up early, you'll sacrifice different things. And then consistency, which we've talked about so many times, right? Like they have a schedule, they consistently do things. So that takes, <coughs> what's one of the nice things about being consistent, it takes the pressure off of what am I going to do tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Because you know what you're going to do tomorrow because you're consistently doing it, like 75 hard. Like, why do we see results when we do programs like that? Because it's consistent day in, day out. And I think that's something we could take away from this kind of lifestyle is that consistency. Mm -hmm. Um, Because in our world, we're very quickly distracted, run to the next thing. We just, A lot of times we don't see things through by showing up day in, day out for a long period of time. We want results so quick that we shortchange ourselves mm-hmm. this thing about if he'd uh you know it took him five years to get to this point you know if he took every th- fourth thursday off well over five years every fourth thursday that's four days a month it's 48 days a year for five years that's 200 days yeah that's he's basically behind a whole year by taking one day off a week yeah dang that's wild you know what i'm saying and i think that's what so to me, that's what I hear is that just that consistency and that belief in something bigger than you is what drives people forward. Yeah. And I think we can all learn from that. Whether you agree with the beliefs or not, you got to find your own beliefs, and that's what they've done mm-hmm. or what he's done at least. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. No matter what path you're on, those same principles apply of consistency, having purpose in yeah. what you're doing and surrounding yourself with people building a community around you to support that because we were thinking another conversation we had I thought it was interesting that they had a little confession area and I was joking with some of the guys that were like dude what what the hell could monks possibly confess to yeah you know like taking thirds at the because right. they are already in an environment that is set up for them to succeed in what they're doing. Yeah. You know, it's not like they got a strip club up the road or, right. you know, that they're selling alcohol in the gift shop or they, they, their environment, they've removed all temptation for quote unquote sin for anything that goes against what their path is. And they are set up to succeed in the lifestyle that they want. So I think that that aside with community is environment too. They have their yeah, their robes, their rooms, or everything. So it's another takeaway too is that we all have our own paths, right? Like this path may be far from what we want. You know, like I know I know that I don't want my life to be right. the, the life of a monk, but I respect it and I can see how their principles can apply to anything that I'm doing with my life. 